Live from the Frederick P. Rose Hall, home of jazz at Lincoln Center in New York, New York. It's The Cube at IBM Z Next, redefining digital business. Brought to you by headline sponsor, IBM. City for the Cube. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier. Join my co-host Dave Vellante. We're here with Mike Ferreira, VP of Z System Software. Uh, Mike, welcome to the Cube. Good. Right, thanks for having me. Um, so uh, Z Systems mainframe is modern platform. You guys, pretty impressive performance. Uh, David Floyer, Wikibon analyst, is very impressed by it. We were on a uh, production meeting uh, this morning and last night. Really amazing performance. It's the Ferrari of cloud, whatever you want to call it, it's a sports car. Skip the Model T for horses, right to Ferrari, as I said on my <laughs> Twitter last night. Um, but software needs to be a big part of it. So you have stuff that takes advantage of the in-processor stuff. So you got IBM software, but then it's also industry software. So could you talk about what is the software vision? What's out there, IBM software, external software? Just make, help us make sense of that. Sure, so you know, everything that we do, we design for the stack, right? So, and the stack obviously starts at the chips, the, the firmware, the operating system, and then the middleware as we go as well. Uh, so with the Z13, there's no exception there, and, and Java is one area that we've really focused on and, and really excelled at. So in that you know, Z now is, my humble opinion, uh, backed up by some data, you know, the single most performant Java platform in the world. Right, so you look at the performance that we've had, uh, more than six times improvement you know, since we started on Java. Uh, you look at the increased uh, throughput, you look at going from a 50% increase for SMT up to 200% increase if you're looking at security enabled applications. Uh, and then a lot of what we do and what's in the portfolio leverages Java. So we embed it in CICS, we embed it in IMS, uh, our operational decision management runs on top of it, the IBM mobile first platform runs on top of Java. So you get all the, the trickle down effect, if you would, by you know, that single investment that we've been making in the core of Java throughout the rest of the stack. And again, that, that performance benefit is, is huge. Ironically, it was a side report out on IBM earlier today, number one developer fan. No, number one with developers with Hadoop. Obviously an area where ETLs and looking to get important, uh, important performance. But, but or bigger ELT. Than, ELT. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, but, but bigger than that though, this is performance. So, this, so, so there's some controversy on Twitter just seeing right now. In the release it says Z13 is the first system able to process 2.5 billion transactions per day. Is that the number or is it 30 billion? Is that a big number? I mean, some people say X86 has been doing, has, can do 2.9 billion transactions. Well, I think that the question is, is it real time or is it batch? Right? And if you look at you know, the, the integrity of the transactions start to finish, that you guarantee what's going to happen you know, from the moment you hit enter all the way through to the two-phase commit, et cetera, et cetera, you know, there's nobody else in the world that can do that at the scale that we can do it. You know, 2.5 billion is an interesting number. You know, we've got countless number of clients who do more than a billion today. Right, that 2.5 is on a single system. That's real uh, time. That's real the, real that's time. That's not a benchmark number, that's a no. real number. Yeah, so, that's so the, you the, know, and you look the, at you know, some of our products, we can actually scale to a million transactions per second, again, real time, uh, which you know, there's no x86 in the world that, that can do that at scale, at availability, at security, all the other abilities. The press release really kind of get, gets lawyered up and look, gets, looks, to, but it's really- I can that, neither confirm nor deny. Yeah, <laughs> but you're talking <laughs> real time, but the difference <laughs> is real time versus batch, right? Sure. I mean, and we do a combination of both, right? So the, you know, the, move, the world continues to move more and more towards real time from batch, but we still have a lot of clients who run huge portions of their workload in batch because they don't need it real time. So Java is big, big part of that. What are the software you guys powering on this thing that you see as big, big, um, big languages that people will be developing on that's going to be taken advantage of? Well, so so an extension of Java, I mentioned the mobile first platform, right? So that's really our, our mobile platform where you take that in parallel to where the data resides, whether it runs on CICS or IMS or Web Series application server or wherever, uh, and you look at you know the throughput ends up being 60% better, the response time ends up being 36% better if and when it runs on Z versus elsewhere. So mobile is, is a huge 
play for us, as well as the scalability on the back end of whatever is driving mobile on the front end, whether that front end is lives on Z or lives somewhere else. Um, the other big piece that I'm really excited about is the extension of Z, right? So the question is not, does it run on Z? But the question is, how do you run it better with Z? Right? And if you look at the paradigms, the as a service paradigm, right? the cloud paradigm, infrastructure, platform, you know, our own offering around Bluemix, you know, our clients have got hundreds of thousands, if not millions of services that could have been built a day ago, it could have been built 40 years ago, that have a huge amount of value, they're proven, they scale, and they provide the function that an application developer needs to go develop whatever the latest and greatest application is. Uh, you know, that to me is hugely powerful in getting folks to think about that paradigm of reuse, and it's in some ways it's deja vu all over again with you know, SOA 10 plus years ago now, uh, but now, you know, in a broader context and you know, with other development paradigms. So Mike, a, a big theme of this announcement is bringing analytics and transaction uh, systems together. What does that mean for your core transaction software and all the tools are around it? How do you accommodate that? What sort of changes do you have to make? What, what should clients be thinking about? Well, so um, you know, prior to this announcement, we've done an awful lot, again, of optimization across the stack, right? So DB2 works extremely well with CICS, with IMS, with Web Server Application Server, whatever's on the front end of that. Uh, with this announcement, you, know, you take the transaction, you take the analytics, and then what can you do with those two things together? So being able to take a transaction that's in flight, in sub-millisecond response time, do the analysis and take action on whatever it is that it could be fraud, it could be upsell, cross-sell, it could be just net new opportunity. Uh, and then you take this world of mobile and these systems of engagement that now gives you context, which you never had before as a standalone system of record in kind of this hybrid world. You can do a lot of really cool things, uh, a lot of huge, hugely valuable things to the business that you couldn't really do like before. What? Give us some examples. Well, so imagine you're walking down the street here in New York City and uh, you have your mobile device. That mobile device is connected to Z on the back end. Uh, it's a uh, pick your favorite retailer. Uh, and you're taking now the location awareness, you're taking into account you know, how much money have I spent over the last however much, however many minutes or hours. Uh, and you know, has any of those been on a food, let's say, right? Some kind of food service. Uh, I happen to be walking by a restaurant, I end up getting a, a transaction or, or a notification that says, hey, here's a 50 cents or 50% off, whatever, a cup of coffee or some kind of food. That's one example, you know, in the real time piece is now I'm going to go pay for that and in the middle of me paying for it, I'm doing a check to see, is it really Mike Pereira who's buying this cup of coffee based on the context, based on the history, based on other charges that have been made within the last minute, uh, and then being able to make a decision on, do I let it go or do I reject it? So the industry generally has been sort of talking about that example, or, uh, and others, mm -hmm. fraud detection, et cetera, for a while now, and, and, and generally the experience has been not quite real time. Are mm -hmm. you saying we're now at a tipping point where you can deliver that experience in real, real time? Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Open, opens up a lot of opportunities, <laughs> right? <laughs> Are you unique in that aspect, do you think? Uh, you people talk about doing it on other platforms, but. So, so we are when it comes to the performance and the response time, right? And again, by nature of having 80% of the world's enterprise data residing on the platform, you can do a lot of things now with that data and to that data versus if the data is dispersed all over the place and you've got multiple copies and then they're nested copies within the multiple copies and then you know, you've got latency issues, you've got data consistency issues, you know, all of that those types of things. So you, you, you're saying within the system you've got this so-called single version of the truth mm -hmm. and you don't have to move it around. Right. So I want to talk about the sentiment in the marketplace. So I got to ask you about the, um, the generational chasm that you're crossing with mainframe. So obviously mainframe's been around, legacy for IBM, yep. built their, their business on it, it's fantastic. I mean, at one point dominated the entire computer industry. Uh, but now the young guns are out there, software developers, you know, they're used to cloud, they take from their local host, push it to the cloud, run a LAMP stack, whatever they do, Node.js. Um, they don't, un they don't, might not have the experience in scale. Mm -hmm. So how do you talk to that generation? Um, the young CIO who might be 35, mm -hmm. you know, to them, Java consider an outdated language maybe to them, uh, or they want to be more cutting edge with data science. Yep. So how do you guys connect to that audience? 
So, so to me, the big thing is we're not different, right? And I think we've kind of had the stigma around Z for a long time. That, well, Z is different, and it's you know this other thing over here, and you know even if you take Linux, which Linux is Linux, there's a perception that well Linux on Z is different. It's not different, right? So as we're going and looking at you know and talking to the next generation, quote unquote, the first message is it's not different. The second message is it's the only platform in the world that can do what it does at the scale with the performance. And oh by the way runs the world's economies. Right? So when you say not different, you mean from a tooling standpoint, from a... Sure, so you're going to go develop an application, a, let's, let's call it a Node.js application, right? You develop that application to deploy it on Z just as you would to deploy it anywhere else in the so world. So I develop wherever I want? Absolutely. Run it on Z. Right, so and now you take this integration aspect that you know, I started mentioning earlier today, and somebody wants to go create an application in Bluemix, leveraging services that run on Z, Again, it's it's no different, right? They don't know, and they don't need to know, nor should they care where that service lives and where it actually gets executed. It's just that that service provides what they need it to provide. So would you say to the young cool kids that this is essentially a Ferrari or, or a souped up sports car, Tesla, whatever? I mean, is it it's that kind of positioning? Ab absolutely, and we do it today. So if, I, if you take my CICS development team, for instance, more than a third of that team has got less than five years of business experience, right? These are the exact same folks that are building applications somewhere else that, and by the way, most of those, or many of those people, never heard of Z before they started working on CICS, yet when they want, they, if they want to work on something that matters to the world, Z is what matters. A lot of old, older programmers my age say, oh, the young generation, they haven't made these days. <laughs> you know, and then they call the entitlement generation. So why not market to that? Hey, you, you know, you're driving a horse and, horse and buggy, go right to the sports car. I mean, yep. that's almost, kind of what you guys are positioning this as, almost like, hey guys, if we can give you the God box, if you will, I know people don't like that term, but that's essentially, <laughs> I won't touch this, is, this, is the, this is the killer box for what you want to do in terms of overall performance, security. Yeah, you can run some stuff on scale out, but just go right here. So is that correct to say absolutely. that that would be a positioning yep, statement? Absolutely. Dave, what do you think about that? Well, I think that the, the point that you're making about, about that you shouldn't care where it's running. So if I'm developing an application, what I want is the system to say, okay, now you're ready to deploy it. Do you want the, you know, you know the, the simple mental model is, do you want the gold standard? Do you want the, the, the silver or the bronze? Yep. And the gold's going to be more expensive. Yep. And if your application and your business requirement justifies it, put it there. You might pay a little bit more, but it's, it's valuable, it's driving business value. Is well, that the sort of model that we should be thinking well about? Well it is, although I'd argue with you about it being more expensive, uh, because certainly at scale, we've proven time and time again that it's not more expensive, so you get all those benefits with actually the price point being less than or equal to running it somewhere else. Um, I think that this, this point well, about- Well you're not saying, wait a minute, hold on, I gotta, yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta ask you a question. Bring it on. You're not saying that the, the, the mainframe is the least lowest cost for any application, any workload. No, or, or, right, okay. no, so I'm not saying that. Right. What okay. I am so saying is- For mission is, critical workloads, that, so let's define that box. Okay, well, so the, the box is going to depend on the application itself, right? right? But generally speaking, if you're running at a scale of 200 VMs or above, we've proven time and time again that the, the mainframe is more performant than running it anywhere else because of all the benefits you get from the virtualization and the parallel processing and the shared everything. Uh, so, so that's you know that's so an that. example. Okay, okay. But, but there's a cost to that performance as well, right? So if your application justifies that, but but there's also the complexity aspect that, yep. you, that presumably should favor you. Yep, absolutely. Right. And you know the other thing that we're seeing, you know, I talked about this heterogeneous or hybrid model with Bluemix and Z. There's another model that that we see evolving out there, which is you know, based on the open standards, you know, whether it's Java, whether it's uh, OpenStack, uh, et cetera, is choosing your deployment and where you deploy it at the time of deployment based on what's your capacity, what's the SLAs, et cetera. Uh, so, you know, what we've announced today around patterns and bringing to market, you know, 12 patterns which allow and enable clients to, you know, bring up to speed very, very quickly, you know, our top dozen or so products, um, you know, including the mobile first uh, platform, for instance, you know, and then we've got clients who decide, you know what, based on today, and based on what's going on and based on the SLAs, I, I may deploy it on Z or I may deploy it somewhere else. It's where do I have capacity and, and how can I best use my entire infrastructure so it's not a religious debate that says, you know, I'm going to put it here, I'm going to put it there, and, and that's the end. So my final question is, what do you say to the folks out there in terms of, obviously, you've got to have a serious business model 
to run the mainframe. You're not going to just be, you know, loading an app into the cloud as a developer. But you know, development shop is there. Um, what do you say to the folks around digital transformation? Because part of the messaging here is digital business, mm -hmm. social business, which I'm a big believer and I see it happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything's instrumented. Big data is a big part of it. So, like, I mean, everything's collectible now, mm -hmm. end to end for an entire business. Which, if you think about it, it's the first time in the history of business that's possible. Mm -hmm. You could literally measure everything. Yep. So, what does that mean? <laughs> what does that digital business challenge mean, and how do you guys, what do you talk to, you guys obviously do your research on this, but like, what's the big hot buttons there for the digital business points? Well, so I think one is the uncertainty, uh, that you don't know what's going to happen these days until it happens. In some cases you're prepared, in some cases you're not. Uh, number two, it's the volatility that comes with the uh, uncertainty. Uh, number three, it's the scale, right? Because you're now getting hit more than ever by all these different places that some you have control over and some you have no control over. Uh, and, and then on top of that, the simplicity point that you mentioned earlier today about your infrastructure overall and how much time are you spending managing however many thousands of servers that you've got versus managing a platform where it's self-contained, you get all those performance benefits and you can still choose to extend it if and, and when you need. So what's your opinion, if, I, if, if, the, if the thesis is all businesses are looking at their value chains and their business configurations and rewiring their business mm -hmm. for digital, mm -hmm. what rooms of the house are they working on first? Is it supply chain, is it infrastructure, is it sales? What do you see the low hanging fruit where your top clients are working on? All over the map. Uh, by vertical, the answer. Kind of, it's kind of Yeah, I mean, it, it depends on, on the vertical. It also depends on where does that client believe their differentiation is, right? And some clients major in supply chain. Uh, some clients major in customer experience and, and differentiation and you know, you, the unique one-on-one -on -one type of interactions. Uh, other clients you know, may major on you know, other things. It kind things, of depends so. on what their core it, it, value yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. If they're customer the, service the beauty organization. Is, <laughs> right, and the beauty is, is that we can serve all of those and bring all these capabilities to all of them uh, regardless of what their priority is. Mike, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Congratulations, uh, great announcement. We like this whole in-processor memory. I mean, the in-memory versus in -memory the in-processor. Yep. Really interesting, the analytics thing. So, looking forward to seeing the software. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back with our next guest, right after the short break, live in New York City. We'll be right back. Thank you.